Hey guys, welcome back to the Butterfly Effect podcast. I'm Liam, I'm here with Jack. Howdy. And today we're doing our first video using the chat GBT. Uh, basically, we want to find out what happens to the Until Dawn characters after the events on the mountain. So as you can see here, I've written, please give me a detailed description about the Until Dawn characters in the present day. I would like in-depth paragraph about what their lives are like now, where they live, what careers they have, who they are dating, and if they still talk to one another. Please have separate detailed paragraphs for Sam, Chris, Mike, Matt, Emily, Jess, Ashley, and our boy Dr. Hill. Um, so afterwards, please write a short story about a reunion party about paying tribute to Josh. I thought it'd be nice if they all meet up in a room again. So tell us about the relationship dynamics and tell us three crazy things that happen, include a jaw-dropping twist ending. So Jack, any expectations? Are you excited for this one? Yeah, and I am. I'm excited to use this chat GBT thing so I've heard really good things about it. But just that last paragraph there, it's like they're doing a reunion party paying tribute to Josh. He's like, oh yeah, remember that guy, you know, when he dressed up and punched us and, you know, put buzz saws above our head and stuff like that. So it's, I'm, I'm really curious to see what it comes up with. It's telling us what Until Dawn is. I think we know that, mate. Cheers for that. So Sam Giddings now lives in Los Angeles where she works as a, as a successful actress. She's been in a few indie films and is about to star in a big budget superhero movie. She's currently dating a fellow actor who she met on the set of one of her movies. Now I never would have guessed that. Sam is an actress. I don't know, that one That one surprises me a little bit. Living in Los Angeles? I don't know, I thought that place might yeah. be a bit too sort of like fakeish and glammy for her. Are they just like taking Hayden Panettiere there at all or something? I don't know, that sounds like something maybe she does. I could be completely wrong, but yeah, I mean like Sam, she spends half of Until Dawn in the bathtub. I get the impression she likes to be on her own quite a lot. She's like now in front of the public and she's, you know, doing acting and all these sorts of things. Yeah, that's strange. Chris Hartley still lives in his hometown of Blackwood Mountain. He works as a high school guidance counsellor and is also a volunteer firefighter. He's been dating a woman he met on a dating app for a few months now. Wow, so that didn't work out with Ashley then. I was going to say, yeah, he's not with Ashley anymore. And uh, interesting that he never moved out of uh, Blackwood. He's like that one guy from It that stayed at home and just like still lives yeah. like where like the trauma is. Guidance counselor. counselor. Yeah. Yeah. I I could see that. Volunteer firefighter. He's good at, you know, burning locks, you know, so I, I can see him <laughs> yeah, doing that. Yeah. Come on, Rose. So he's moved to NYC, the Big Apple, after the events of Until Dawn. He works as a personal trainer and has a successful YouTube channel. Oh, Mike, we should do a collab, buddy. We're big fans. Yeah. Oh, where he posts fitness videos. He's single and enjoys the single life, but he still keeps in touch with his old friends. He seems the most legit one so far. Yeah, he sounds like Joey Triviani here, to be honest. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like there. Him. He's there in his little vest top doing his little YouTube videos and things. Oh god. Yeah, because I think he said he wanted to be the president, so I guess he gave up on politics and now he's a, he's a fitness guru. Okay, so Matt Taylor also moved away from Blackwood Mountain and now lives in Denver. He works as a park ranger and is in a long-term relationship with a fellow park ranger. Been dating for a few years now and are planning to engage getting soon. Again, like, I could somewhat see this, you know? Like... There's just something about Matt that says that he's going to be in a stable relationship. I think we all knew that the whole Emily thing just wasn't right for him. <laughs> I wonder if he's carrying the fellow Park Rangers bags as well. But yeah, no, interesting <laughs> though. Good for Matt. Guy got engaged. I'm happy for the guy. Emily Davis is a successful real estate agent in LA. Ah, oh, so she can meet up with Sam. She's been married to a wealthy businessman for a few years and they have a young daughter together. She's still close to her old friends, but doesn't get to see them as often as she'd like. She's like, Sam's next door, but just sack her off like that. Yeah, she's getting her uh, wealthy uh, husband to buy her more, more of them bloody coats. Yeah. <laughs> and bags I... and things that she goes on about. I thought that's something, you know, maybe Jess would do, going into the modelling and stuff. But okay, good for Emily, though. So, uh, Jessica Riley moved to New York City. Oh, didn't, didn't uh, Mike move there? Uh, after Until Dawn and is now a successful fashion designer. She's been dating a woman she met through work for a few years now and they're planning on getting married soon. 
Oh, wow. okay. So, Jess is, uh, yeah, basically, she's, she, she's changed her sexuality, so she's dating a girl, is she? Wow. Fair play. Mike's, just, Mike's there, just like, the, the eyeballs, just like, in his palm of his hand. <laughs> A uh, fair play to Jess, though. Uh, we've got Ashley, still in Blackwood Mountain, and is a nurse at the local hospital. That's interesting. That's very close to Chris. I think something's happening here. Yeah. She's been dating a police officer for a few years now, and they're planning on moving together soon. Yeah, I, I reckon either she's still into... Something's going on there. I don't know. One of them's still into the other one, and they're just, like, saving face, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Ash is da dating, like, the police officer who works close with the fire brigade so she can see Chris often. Yeah. Uh, so, finally, Dr. Hill now lives in a secluded cabin in the woods. He's retired from psych psychiatry and spends most of his time painting and writing. He's still haunted by the events of Until Dawn and has never fully recovered from what happened. Oh, wow, interesting. It's funny because it seems like the others were in the thick of the action and they're, like, out in Hollywood living at large, but Dr. Hill, yeah. you know, he wasn't even there. It's, like, <laughs> in a cabin in the woods, like, oh, God, the trauma. Ironically, yeah, he's the one that sounds like he needs therapy the most. Yeah, yeah damn, Dr. Yeah, Hill. Is. All right, here is our crazy short story. Here we go. It had been ten years since the events of Until Dawn, and the surviving friends were gathering for a reunion party to pay tribute to their friend, Josh, he tragically died a few years after the events. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> he died, I guess, maybe as a Wendigo. Maybe, uh, maybe they're, they're on about Wendy, Josh. I don't know. They had all gone their separate ways after that fateful night, but they still kept in touch and made an effort to see each other whenever they could. Chris had organised the party. Oh, no, at the family's cabin on Blackwood Mountain. That's not a good idea. <laughs> we're just no. make, we're making Until Dawn 2, basically. Hopefully he doesn't get pissed off his head this time. <laughs> Hopefully where it all started. Everyone was excited to see each other and catch up on old times. They shared stories and memories of Josh and toasted to his memory with shots of whiskey. It's like no sense. <laughs> Chris passed out at the bar while like the prank, another prank happens. Oh, do you remember when he was off his meds and he played that prank on us? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a nuisance. Oh man. As the night went on, things started to get a little crazy. Mike challenged Matt to a wrestling match, like, Emily's mine, goddammit. <laughs> And the two of them ended up breaking a coffee table. It's like the WWE video all over again. Emily and Jess got into a heated argument over who had the biggest diva, who had been the biggest diva back in the day. Yeah, another argument. I, I like that. It's it's it stayed canon. It stayed true to the story. Yeah. It's so believable. What's this? Ashley and her police officer boyfriend had a bit too much to drink, and ended up skinny dipping in the nearby lake. Must have been a bit cold up there, mustn't it? <laughs> What's he doing there? Why is Ashley like? She's clearly trying to make Chris jealous. Like, I'm gonna oh, bring my yeah. officer boyfriend to like the the cabin, and then we're gonna yeah, like yeah, go skinny dipping. Poor Chris, he's organised the party as well, and he's got to put up with Ashley bringing like the boyfriend. Ashley, slap in the face, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Ashley, come on, you're better than that. So as the party started winding down, Sam noticed that Doctor Hill was nowhere to be found. Oh, we have a mystery. Um, she went looking for him and eventually found him sitting alone on the porch, staring off into the distance. Are you okay? she asked him. He looked up at her, his eyes filled with sadness. I'm not okay, he said. I'll never be okay what happened at the lodge. Sam sat mean? down next. <laughs> just, doesn't even fit, it ends in the middle of a sentence. Sam just sat, sat next to Dr. Hill. Is that it? <laughs> I think so, mate. Like. What? I asked what for a jaw-dropping twist ending. A jaw-dropping twist ending is like Sam sat next to Dr. Hill. <laughs> oh, God, it was going so well. Oh. It was going so well. It... Weirdly, though, I feel like a lot of this is, you could argue, accurate. It is. I could just see a lot of this stuff happening. Maybe not Sam becoming an actress. I could see Mike getting into fitness and going on YouTube. Chris, maybe a volunteer firefighter. I can definitely see Chris and Ashley doing their like jealous ex thing, where like they yeah. like Ross and Rachel treatment with each other. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Emily and Jess sort of bitching, you know, again like who was the biggest diva. I could totally see that. Yeah, I mean Doctor Hill being more troubled than any of them. Like, 
He wasn't even there. <laughs> That's it. Oh, Jesus Christ. But oh, basically, I think Until Dawn 2 was a little anticlimactic. We went back to the mountains and yeah. uh, Dr. Hill went missing and, and Sam sat next to him. So that was a bit thrilling when that happened. I can't wait to see what the choice of that, you know, comes to be. But yeah. Uh, Until Dawn 2, uh, a bit of a flop, nowhere near the way Until Dawn 1 was. But yeah, I mean, th that was very interesting to do. Uh, so to be honest, guys, we just experimented a little bit with a different video format. Um, let us know what kind of uh, videos you'd like us to do. There's a lot, you know, of um, what's the scope and sort of like leeway we can have with this chat GPT thing. Maybe you want us to look at like the Life is Strange cast, the Quarry characters. Let us know, throw some ideas at us and we'll happily do a similar video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, we'll see you next time. Um, we'll see you next time where hopefully we'll be doing a collab with uh, Mr. Fitness Michael Monroe. We'll see you guys in the next one.